It is common knowledge that many want to live their life without as much pain as possible, be it mentally or physically. Physically speaking, and in terms of Battle Titan combat, it is common knowledge that you really want to dodge any heavy blows. Some creatures might not be able to take as many blows as others, however, Metricanthosaurus can afford to take a blow or two, heavy or not. Why? Because they have their own personal health care. Hello there, my name is Adamotte, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to properly fight as a Metricanthosaurus. First of all, any future update may change the way you play as a creature, and my time with it are limited, so one of your more experienced Metricanthosaurus player might not agree with everything I say, and if you find something disagreeable, just comment down below. In this video, we'll be going over its arsenal, the subspecies, its terrain compatibility, and the types of fight it can find itself in. Also, due to recent updates, I feel like I need to dive a little deeper into the type of fighting style the Metricanthosaurus has been kind of updated to suit. What I mean is, now there's a certain strategy that are mostly suited for Metricanthosaurus and that no other creature in the game currently has, aside from probably some modded creatures. One more thing, this video will focus on solo play as Metricanthosaurus. I will however touch it just a little bit on the Metricanthosaurus group play at the end of the video. Now without further ado, let's hop into Arsenal. We only have one head ability, that being the standard bite that causes medium damage. We have two sense abilities, one being Twilight Menace, that increases stamina regeneration during night. Second one is Lone Hunter, that increases damage output when not in group. We have two front limb abilities, one being Balance, that increases turn radius. The second one is a claw attack that causes high damage. We have two options for hide, one being Putrid Scales, that venomize any incoming attackers. The second one is lightweight scales that increases speed at the cost of turning speed. We have two options on tail, one being balancing tail that increases turning radius. The second one is your standard tail attack. The voice abilities are probably the, one of the main factors if you win or lose a battle. And you have four options, the first one being primal men that increases your healing rate by 8% for 25 seconds. And yes, this call works even if you are in combat. The second ability are Intimidating Screech that decreases damage output for any creatures within a certain radius. This ability is also the one that costs the least stamina to use. The third ability is called Hustle and that increases your group trotting speed. The fourth ability is a Healing Call, which unlike Primal Men, the first ability that only heals the caller, this ability heals everyone in your group within a certain radius. Call ability 3 and 4 are mostly meant for groups. As this video are focused on solo play, I would recommend using this arsenal. I will however recommend that you switch between Twilight Menace and Lone Hunter. Twilight Menace for the night, and when day, Lone Hunter. I would also recommend not using the tail attack, but rather the balancing tail. I will come back to that later since this kinda ties into the battle style of Metricanthosaurus. When it comes to what subspecies you should choose to grow, I would go for defense Metricanthosaurus. You see, the fighting style of Metricanthosaurus kinda requires you to be damaged, and that's why sacrificing defense for speed are kinda not worth it since you need all the defense you can get. When it comes to what terrain you should try and fight in, I'm not saying that open terrain works against you. However, there are more ideal places, especially if you're solo. Areas with elevation and lot of hindrances like trees or bushes are much better suited for Metricanthosaurus. That being said, try to avoid areas like canyons or any sort of spaces where the enemy can use the terrain to limit your movement. In terms of stats, I do rank the Metricanthosaurus on the lower tiers, meaning you should avoid head-to-head -head battle and rather do hit and run. Any obstructions in the terrain that limits your enemy's vision will only work in favor for you. With the balanced tail, you can also tail ride your enemy much more easier, but that doesn't mean you should try and dodge them entirely. 
You see, Metricanthosaurus, before the update, used to have a venomous bite. However, now that bite has been removed, and the only way for Metricanthosaurus to venomize his opponent is by having putrid scales and then allowing people to attack him. It is due to this reason that you need to be able to take a punch, which is why I really recommend the defense Metricanthosaurus. As a matter of fact, I would recommend using the intimidating speech at the beginning of the fight, let your enemy hit you, and then they'll just venomize themselves by attacking you. Most creatures' highest damage output attacks cause stamina to activate, so if you take away their stamina, you only have to worry about their normal attacks. However, this is also why I recommend that you should not fight Apexes. You see, Apexes, even their standard abilities are quite damaging and they can probably kill you in just a few hits, even if they are just normal attacks. What good is there to intentionally let people hit you if he only needs a few hits to kill you? Even in packs, killing Apexes are difficult. The only Apexes I would recommend you killing as a solo are the small ones. Killing Apexes has only become more difficult with them getting an AoE attack. Combine that with a larger amount of HP and you'll definitely find an opponent that is difficult to deal with as solo, even with group. For now, just keep yourself to young ones. The Metri are capable of fighting only once against mid-tiers, however, that is only if you strategize and play smart. The best way to win against mid-tiers as a Metri is by drawing the battle out. You have to make sure that your opponent gets a lot of venom in him or her. And then you just have to draw it out. Let the venom do its work and slowly but surely drain its stamina. You are faster than most creatures in the game, so if you do need to make a distance, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. If you do fall low on HP, then make sure you have enough distance to be safe enough to use the healing call. Also, because the healing calls uses a lot of stamina, make sure you have enough stamina to be able to use both the healing call and to be able to make a run for it, should your opponent try and chase you. Once you have enough stamina, then you can activate it. And you can see how much stamina the call uses. With the healing call, you'll be able to return to the battle in complete 100 HP. By repeating this cycle, over a longer period of time. You'll eventually be able to wear him down so much that you can finish him. When they're low, that's when you can do a more direct approach. However, only do the direct approach if you are certain that they are really, really low. In a fight against another low tier, you can just forget about trying to draw the battle out. Because the opponents are either as fast or even faster than you, you can bet that it will be pretty difficult to create enough distance to use both the healing call and have stamina enough to do any counter attack should he try to attack you while you run. If the opponent has bleeding attacks and low tiers usually have them, then it would be better to take a more defensive stance. After all, running around while bleeding only increases the blood loss. Force your opponent to come to you, and when they do, that's when you slash them with your high damage output with claw. If you're attacked by multiple opponents, against any other higher tier, you should be able to outrun them. But should you be attacked by the lower tiers, it would be better to single out one person and then focus on him. Having the balance tail and making it a competition of turn radius, it should be more difficult to hit you. 
I want to see a person with low HP, single that person out and then kill him. Again, it would be better to face multiple opponents in an area with more obstructions. The extra foliage can act as cover and make it more difficult for your opponents to predict your movement. By utilizing the same strategy of getting them low on stamina, you will eventually have them in your class, and they will be unable to escape. Against grapplers, it would be better to just let him first attack you, get venom in, and then utilize the same strategy as before. Against a few grapplers, that shouldn't be too difficult. However, if a whole pack comes at you, then it's just a matter of time until you die. Don't feel too bad. It is you against a whole army, what are you going to do? So to summarize, try to fight your battles in areas with a lot of foliage and hindrances. Against creatures of higher tiers, I'd say mid tiers, the strategy goes as following. Use the intimidating screech to be able to tank a few hits, then intentionally let your opponent hit you and get that venom going. Once your opponents are low on stamina, that's when you can go a bit more aggressive. Should you get low on health, then make some distance and use the healing call, and make sure that you have enough stamina to be able to use both call and make a run for it should the opponents chase you. Repeat this until you're certain that your opponents are low on health, and that's when you can go in and finish it. I would not recommend to do this against Apexes. They have usually too much HP and far too high damage output to be able to do this. If you can't fight an Apex as a solo metry, then why are you even watching this video? Against low tiers, your base stats are a bit higher than the lowest of low tiers, so try to force them in a head-to-head -head clash. In a 1v1, you should be able to outlast them. Against a pack of low tiers, try to single out one person, and if they try to swarm you, make it a battle of turn radius and it will be difficult to hit you. They will probably do more damage to each other rather than you. And if you get attacked by low tier stack and pounce, then one or two shouldn't be a problem. But a pack? Sayonara! Now about if you were in a group. There's nothing too much to say except just do the same strategy. However, just make sure that you can attack once it's your turn and that's basically it. Of course in this scenario, it would be better to have the healing call for the group. If one of your group members should fall low on health, then you can back them up with your healing call. Do you have any specific creature you want me to cover? If you do, just comment it down below, and they may appear on the poll. The next poll has somewhat been decided, but there's always the next one, and the one after that, and so on. With that, I will leave you guys pondering on what creature you want me to cover next, and I'm going to go and collect more data for the next creature. With that, I will see you guys later. Goodbye!